now we are going to see even more about respiration the process of oxidizing food to release energy inside a cell that is respiration the process of taking in oxygen using it in oxidation of glucose releasing energy and eliminating waste products like carbon dioxide and water in the presence of respiratory enzymes you can see the respiration process is carried out over here the respiration has two steps that is external respiration and internal respiration you can see it over here let us see about the significance of respiration in plants during respiration the plants convert glucose molecule into carbon dioxide and water with release of energy you can see the plant convert the glucose molecules into carbon dioxide and this energy released is utilized by the plants to sustain its life the energy released from food is useful for different process like growth you can see it over here and the excretion reproduction and nutrition the carbon dioxide released into environment which is again used by the plant in the process of photosynthesis here you can see the carbon dioxide which is used by the plant during photosynthesis and releases oxygen and now we are going to see about nutrition in plants what are the nutrients the plant contains the component of food like carbohydrate fats proteins vitamins and minerals these are all the nutrients the plant is contained the uses of nutrients for the living organisms are it is used to build their bodies it is used for growth and it is repair the damaged parts of their bodies it provide the energy to carry out the life process these are all the uses of nutrition in plants And now we are going to see the main modes of nutrition. It has two main modes. The first one is autotrophic nutrition. The second one is heterotrophic nutrition. You can see here the autotrophic and heterotrophic which is depicted over here. The autotrophic nutrition is nothing but the nutrition in which organisms can prepare their own food. You can see the organism it is act as autotrophs the organisms which can prepare their own food are called autotrophs whereas the heterotroph nutrition the organisms which get their food directly or indirectly from plants that are called heterotrophs you can see the heterotroph is depicted over here the heterotrophs are getting their food directly or indirect from the plants animals fungi and these are all heterotrophs let us see about the plant nutrients the plant nutritional sources are the main source of the plant is fixation of atmospheric carbon dioxide it is used by photosynthesis process in photosynthesis this is the source of energy to make sugar the soil and water are also sources of nutri nutrition because it have a large amount of minerals and nutrients non mineral nutrients is getting from air and water carbon hydrogen and oxygen the mineral nutrients it is getting from the soil that include macronutrients which are required in large quantities whereas the micronutrients it is 
required in small quantities. Let us see about the macronutrients. It is said to be the primary and secondary macronutrients. The primary nutrients are nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. You can see here. And secondary macronutrients are calcium, magnesium and sulfur. You can see the primary and secondary macronutrients over here. And now we are going to see the seven micronutrients and these are needed in small amounts. The micronutrients are copper, iron, boron, zinc, molybdenum and manganese and the final one is chloride. You can see the seven kinds of micronutrients over here. What are the nutrients of tining? The plant get nutrients from soil and the earth that is roots and leaves and stems. The macronutrients the plants get nutrients from soil or earth that is roots and leaves and stems. The macronutrients are usable and not sufficient. So we are using fertilizer. The other ways are nitrogen fixation carnivorous feeding and symbiotic association with fungi. The neutral plant communities that recycle nutrients for use by other organisms. The transpiration is nothing but the evaporation of excess water from aerial parts of a plant. This is done by leaves, stems, flowers and fruits. The root absorbs the minerals and water from the soil. For growth, the water and solute are transported up through the plants via xylem. The driving force is the evaporation from leaves via grasses. So this overall process is called transpiration. Now we are going to see the transpiration of carbohydrates. Leaf makes the carbohydrate and carbohydrates are transported down via phloem. It can be used as a sugar sink. You can see here. Let us see about the other modes of nutrition in plants. You can see the parasitic plants here. The parasitic plants are plants which do not have chlorophyll and cannot prepare their own food. You can see there is no chlorophyll so that the leaves do not look like in green color and they get their food from other plants. It is called host. The sample example of parasitic plants is cascata that is amarbel. You can see it over here. Now we are going to see about insectivorous plants. The insectivorous plants is a plant which feed on insects. The well known example of insectivorous plants is pitcher plant. You can see the pitcher plant over here. The leaf of the pitcher plant is modified into pitcher. The end of the pitcher has a lid. You can see the lid over here which can be open and closed. You can see here. When an insect enters into the pitcher, the lid is closed. The insect is then digested by digestive juice inside the pitcher. And you can see the pitcher plant which is depicted over here. And now we are going to see about saprotropes. The saprotropes are plants which do not have chlorophyll and cannot prepare their food. So it getting their food from dead and decaying organic matter. The well known example for the saprotropes is mushroom 
and bread mold you can see the mushroom here it couldn't prepare its own food so it is taken from dead and decaying organic matter and now we are going to see about the symbiotic relationship the symbiotic relationship in some plants live together and share shelter and nutrients the example is lichens in lichens an algae and fungus live together you can see the lichen is depicted over here in lichen the algae and fungus are living together you can see it over here well, let us talk about how nutrients are replenished in the soil the plants absorb nutrients from the soil so the nutrients in the soil is automatically decreases the farmers add manures and fertilizer to the soil to increase the nutrients in the soil the bacterium called rhizobium which lives in the roots of leguminous plants like grams peas and beans you can see it over here it convert nitrogen from the air into soluble form in the soil and makes the soil rich in nitrogen you can see it over here here is a fertilizer which is used on soil and now let us discuss about macronutrients the plant requires these nutrients that is macronutrients in relatively large amount the macronutrients are carbon oxygen hydrogen nitrogen phosphorus potassium calcium manganese and sulfur and the plant require in very small amount of macronutrients that nutrients are chlorin iron manganese boron zinc nickel molybdenum you can see the macronutrients that which the plant require in very small amount you can see it over here the primarily cofactors for enzyme functions let us talk about the nutrient deficiencies the nutrient deficiency which is lack of essential nutrients it exhibits specific symptoms that is it is dependent on function of nutrient and another one is it is dependent on solubility of nutrient you can see it over here the nutrient deficiency in plants and here you can see this is the healthy plant this is the phosphate deficient you can see it over here the difference between healthy and phosphate deficient and this plant a potassium deficient so it is changed from phosphate deficient and here the nitrogen deficient is over here you can see the different deficiencies of plants let us talk about the magnesium deficiency 